You hearing horse stuff? Well, this is the adventure we're going on today. They're ready. <laughs> my good buddy Bryce, my neighbor, offered to take me out on his horses. He's hunted this unit quite a bit, and he's a horse guy. Bryce, welcome to the program. Thanks, thanks guys, glad to be here. Take the horses and go see some new country? Yeah, let's find some country that's harder to hike to. I don't know how they're gonna be. They've been uh, on the mountain for a week and a half, tied to a tree, so <laughs> probably a little bit worn out, but we'll see how this goes. I'm gonna probably do some things wrong, because I don't saddle horses a lot. Can I make a confession? What? I'm terrified of horses. <laughs> draft oh really yeah how old is he nine how many hands is he 16 just over 16 i know a little bit of horse talk, horse talk. <laughs> what are you doing i'm just partnering with my horse i found him found him this is my guy <laughs> oh, geez. take these two and then all right we'll grab these other two that are in a different pan that easy man I when I was a kid I just remember just watching old cowboys and be up in deer country hiking around I'd see guys on horses and I remember telling my dad one day I'm gonna have horses I'm gonna ride them all over I should find big bucks never happened but going on a ride today it's gonna be fun I've been on a couple horseback hunts where we pack in and sleep out you know camp out for a week not really hunt off the horses just got us to where we were going but today we're going to just be riding horses. Yeah. Guys, we made it to the spot. That was rad. Me and Logan rode the Rambos up here a week before the season. Then they closed it down to motorized vehicles, so. I think from the truck. But uh, got a look out up here. Can go set up in the glass in this canyon. Bryce has had this tag a few times and this is one of his favorite spots, right? It's a true story. True story. I pulled the gun off a uh, truck. He carried my gun up here. Yeah, it's bigger than that one I showed you, don't you think? Yeah, I think. Yeah. Right off the 
him? No, you got him back. Just back. He's back. There he goes. He just fell. Crashed. Get ready for a second. Yo, what's up guys? Good morning. Just got done with my morning workout, which I, can I even call it my morning workout when you don't do it that often? <laughs> I'm always hunting. Check in the day. Today's October 22nd. You know what that means. Tomorrow we leave for Kansas. I think Casey's out hunting mule deer today on horseback, which sounds like a ton of fun. And I, he told me he had a spot in mind where he wanted to go and get away from roads, get into some roadless area and look for big bucks. So wishing Casey the best of luck today. I have a missed call from BMAC. I'm sure he wants to know what our plan is for Kansas. I never have a plan. I literally live day to day. I am the worst planner. Anyone who knows me, if you ever plan to hunt with me, you're like, dude, what's the plan? What time? Where are we going? I'm like, I don't even worry about that till like the moment of. So I got to call BMAC, see what's up with him. But I just got done with my workout. Uh, today I use the Tiger's Blood pre-workout. I really, really need to call those guys and order myself some Mountain Ops uh, Watermelon Yeti pre-workout because that's my favorite. On the schedule today is Unpacked from Idaho, Packed for Kansas. Good morning, guys. It is October 22nd. And that was a rifle. At the gun range today, going to be trying to get the uh, new Weatherby Vanguard First Light Rifle chambered in 257 Weatherby, sighted in. Have not shot it yet, so I set it up at the house kind of before we went on this last set of hunts and I'm uh, gonna go see if I can get it on paper and zeroed in to my liking and then just uh, try to get comfortable with the gun. We'll see how it goes today. I kind of forgot my uh, bore sighting kit. I've got the bore sighter, but there's like a reflective piece of target that I use to kind of start with. So we'll see uh, see how it works out. Here's all the gear. I got the lead sled, some ammo, the rifle, spotting scope, phone scope. Go we'll get everything set up and start shooting. The rifle is officially dialed in. I took a bite. I think I shot like a box and a half of shells. And uh, honestly, the hardest part for me, I made a mistake when I went from the bore sight at 25 yards out to paper at 100 yards. So I had to mess around with that a couple little times. And then we finally got her on paper. Got it sighted in at three inches high at 100, so 300 yards zero. And then I had like a ballistics chart already printed out. Being able to reference that. I immediately could go from the 100 yard range and then start shooting the gong. So kind of just worked my way out. But towards the end, shooting out to 800 yards, a bit of a wind picked up. We have a storm coming in, uh, so it was less consistent, but uh, very comfortable and consistent, 400, 600. And uh, it was a ton of fun. So I got my pops calling me. I'm gonna take this call, go home, start packing, hit the road to Kansas. Here comes the cavalry. Here comes the cavalry. There's my man Chuck. What's up, Chuck? Does Logan just look like a cowboy now or what? <laughs> <laughs> That's a beautiful sight right there. Ditter. I'm almost done. I was trying to race you guys, but. Time. Yep. Front. That's our pack train. We got all the meat, the head, our spotters. We're gonna wear backpacks out of here, all in one horse. That's a trigger, by the way. That's what's up. That's what's for breakfast. Check this out. Leftover elk backstrap from last night with some potatoes and bacon. I came home without a buck because I had set a goal to kill an older age class deer. You know, something similar to last year. Let me show you the buck I shot last year in Idaho. This is him right here. Okay, not a high scoring deer, but definitely an older age class deer. Better than average mass, big eye guards, but a frame that clearly is never going to be like, you know, a big giant high scoring deer just because his genetics are shallow forks and heck he's a three by four. So that was the goal and I set the goal to kill a big buck and never could make it happen. So I'm curious to ask you guys, when you guys go hunting, if you set a goal to kill a certain age class deer or whatever, when I come home from a hunt like that, I look back at the canyon and I look, look back at that canyon many times like, you kicked my trash, you know, I feel defeated. 
not in a bad way. And uh, it doesn't take away from all the great memories we had and spending time with Ken and you know cooking dinner at camp and doing all that fun stuff and just enjoying the great outdoors and the public land and all that. Hold on, check this out. Here we go. Oh, look at that. But uh, what I wanted to ask, do you guys feel that way? Do you feel like defeated? Because I feel like personally going for five days, hunting as hard as we did, glassing as many deer as we did, that mountain dominated me. I feel like that mountain conquered me. And I just want to go, like it just makes me want to go back so bad. Prove that I can accomplish the goal, which is to find an old buck and harvest it. If I can possibly even get one day hunt left uh, after Kansas and in between Colorado, I would love a chance to go back out there and try again. What's that? That's all the way we didn't have to haul. Wow. We did it. That was fun. That was one of the funnest deer hunts I've ever been on. I mean the whole thing, the whole 10 days, but today was just what I pictured a horse back hunt would be would be like. Ride, get out, spot, stock on feet, shoot one, break it down, bring the horses in, pack it out. And that's pretty much a summary of today. Can't thank Bryce enough, this guy's a stud. It's crazy about horses, because I keep telling you guys I was always envious of people on horses hunting, and I always said, I'm gonna have a horse one day. I'm gonna ride back in the back country on elk. And uh, my parents were into it. My mom was a big horse person when she was young, but I didn't carry on and we never had horses growing up. But And so when I got old enough to buy my own horse, I was like, I don't know anything about horses. Bryce has got a cool story. He didn't, he grew up without horses and he did the same. He was always wanting a horse, always wanting a horse and hunt off a horse. So he, when he got married, he bought a house and a horse. And uh, he's been, he's had horses for what, 18 years, 15 years? 16. 16 years and he just figured it out by himself and now he's got six horses and everybody wants to hunt with Bryce <laughs> so anyway thanks for watching guys we're gonna go get this thing hung up in my cooler and but probably gonna let it age for about seven days until we get back from Kansas dry age something for a while so that's the trigger I'm just doing what trigger does <laughs> a little boot goofing yeah thanks for watching guys I will see you tomorrow Packing is about done, but there's one other thing I had to do before we hit the road tomorrow. So I've had my deer aging in a buddy of ours up in Pocatello, his cooler that he had for a few days. And then when I got home, I dropped off like the grind bag, front quarters, hind quarters to the butcher and then um, kept the pieces below, which have been in my garage refrigerator. I just basically... Uh, Use the old Yeti loadout bucket, put some racks over it, had everything hanging in there. And temperature wise, I would say it's probably like upper 30s, low 40s. And uh, here's kind of what I got now on the old Camp Chef cutting board. So we have back strap number one, back strap number two. Here's the rib roll, which has been getting quite a bit of interest, which is all right here. We've emuled your tongue, which I'm saving for Ryan Callahan. Two tenderloins. In the heart. So Cal is a big proponent of aging meat. Uh, I know he has left when it's like on the bone quarters and stuff. Uh, he's left that age in his refrigerator. I want to say for like a good month. Challenge is I'm going to be hitting the road for a couple weeks, and I'm on uh, on the fence whether I should just let it be or just do it now. I think I'm just going to do it now. I'm not going to do anything too fancy, but I am going to just get it packaged so that I can. Uh, come back and readdress it when I get home and cook it up. The back strap, so talking to Cal when we were in Wyoming on his trip, he suggested leaving on a lot of the extra fascia, kind of the silver skin, when you freeze it. And then when you take it out to cook it, you can do the final kind of preparations and cleaning. So I'm just gonna try to clean it up just a little bit and probably just freeze them in bigger chunks. I'm gonna shoot for bigger backstraps this year as a whole, probably just chunk them into maybe three pieces for each backstrap, and then I'll cut the steaks individually whenever I pull them out to thaw them. Tenderloins are gonna get, get cooked whole, as is the rib roll. Uh, Cal's been giving me some ideas on how to best prepare that. So he's suggesting sauerkraut, garlic, apples, and then uh, hit it on a high simmer in a crock pot, and then turn it down and just cook it low and slow for a long time. Break up this connective tissue, some of the fat, 
but I think it's gonna be good. I don't know for sure. Never done it before, but that's gonna be the plan is to cook that rib roll in a crock pot. And then the tongue, I'm not gonna touch the tongue. I'm gonna freeze it along with my other one that I have in the freezer. And I'm gonna gift that to Callahan for Christmas because he loves the tongue so much. And then I'll let him cook it up and prepare it. Casey and Cody from Born and Raised were able to try it. They're on the fence. Cody was a definite no. Casey was kind of like, eh, it was okay. I've not had mule deer tongue, but I'm willing to try it. And then we'll keep the, the heart for uh, heart tacos. Probably save that one for my dad, actually. That way when he comes back, uh, we can enjoy that. He really likes cooking up heart. And uh, because he was the one that found this buck, and was on the hunt, I think it's fitting that I save a lot of the choice cuts for him. So that's my plan. I'm gonna get to cutting. Here it is, the finished product. Heart, back strap, tenderloin, big rib roll, mule deer tongue for Ryan and Callahan again. I'm not eating it, unless he cooks it for me. She's all done, they're all packaged up. We are uh, on the home stretch to Kansas, but just wanted to thank you guys once again for following along on this daily video series. I hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as we have had a good time filming it starting way back in August. We thought about doing this for a long, long time and finally decided, you know what? There's no better time than now, let's give it a shot. Today was a great day. Casey finally got it done on the horses and couldn't be more thrilled for the buck that he killed. I've always wanted to kill something on horseback and for him to be able to do that as we're getting ready to go to Kansas is just completely awesome. So could not be more happy for you, Case. Good work, brother. You helped me on my tag and uh, man, wish I could have been there for it. But we will, uh, we're all gonna get it done in Kansas. I feel really good. We're gonna punch three beautiful Kansas whitetail tags. We're gonna make fun videos because we're gonna be back together for the first time since I wanna say about August 22nd. So it's been a long time. And um, man, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Anyways, again, thank you guys for all the support, all the positivity, and we will see you tomorrow. Well, I wasn't gonna vlog anything right now. I was just gonna cook dinner and enjoy it, but I'm impressed. This is deer steak loins from last year, potatoes and onions, and like a Southwest salad. Figured it'd be worth showing you guys. That's what's for dinner. Bridget did a gigantic food prep today. Meals for days. Like I said, this is from last year, and I'm curious. I'm actually curious because I have meat in my freezer from two seasons ago. Some people prefer to leave meat in the freezer for at least a year. Some people say it's a, a different way of curing the meat. Curious, how long will you guys freeze your meat and eat it? I've never, I, I can honestly say I've never got meat out of the freezer two or three years and had a bad experience. So for me, we got these two uh, chest freezers and one in there and uh, I'll eat it for as long as it's frozen. This is gonna be a treat. I've been saving these for a long time. All right guys, so it's late at night. Well, it's only 8.20 p.m. But um, looks like Casey got a buck, which is so cool. He sent me some videos on the phone on the horseback ride. And I'm not gonna lie, I don't like horses that much because I've seen a handful of bad experiences and people get hurt on them really bad and I've never liked them even since I was a kid but I'll tell you what that trip from what I've seen already looked like a blast so that's what Casey got to do so congratulations Casey shot a really cool buck and I'm just like sitting here like these videos are so cool I haven't even seen them all all the footage from BMAC all the footage from Casey I've just been surfing through my own footage and I don't know this day by day video stuff is is so cool we've done this style before like I said back in Colorado where we did like all three perspectives and they kind of bounce around it's so much work hey Char you gotta stay off the computer it's so much work just uh doing all these video files. So I just went through these two SD cards. So I've gone through all my files. Let me show you how I have them organized. So when you go into the 2018 season, you have a folder for every single day of September. Um, August, we started on August 17th, so I have all those days. And then I should have done this before, but I made monthly folders. Looking at some of my favorite days, like just kind of looking back on everything. And let me show you one of the f my favorites. <laughs> oh my heavens, brother! Oh, you just wow! Oh my goodness! This is good. Making this is life? bringing back all the memories. So let me just tell you guys, I enjoy filming my adventures. I have since I was a teenager. And another thing I've enjoyed so much is sharing them with people. When I started all this, 
being a teenager, asking my parents for a video camera when I was for Christmas. I'm sure they financed the dang things. They used to be so expensive back then. Not many people had a video camera, especially a high school kid. To be able to film all those hunts back then, all those adventures, I did shed hunts, and I just loved sharing them with people, whether that was my mom, my mom and my dad, or a couple of friends in my you know bedroom just showing them what I love to do and what I thought um, others were missing out on. Adventures like this, experiences like that. That's why I love making these films, guys. I want to inspire you guys to get out and do it yourselves. We get a lot of comments from people who start hunting because of this channel. And uh, kudos to Casey for starting this channel so many years ago and inviting uh, me to join him and share my passion through this channel on YouTube. And the same with BMAC. He's filming his hunts and his fishing adventures and everything he's doing day to day. And I just got to tell you guys, I love doing this. I'm freaking out, man. This series is so cool. If this is the first time you guys have watched the video, please subscribe. If you haven't seen all the videos, go back and start with day one. I promise you guys will not regret it. Honestly, thank you so much. This has been, this is a dream come true for me since I was a kid. Wanted to do this stuff for a living, and back then there just really wasn't any way to do it. And uh, we found a way, and definitely one. Wouldn't be possible without you guys. So I love you guys and thank you so much. Have a good night. Good luck on your hunts. And uh, I'll see you in the morning.